everybody back with a brand new Cabral concept. Glad you could join me today. We're going to be going over why you might not be able to break down histamines and what you can do about it. If you've never heard about histamines before, they are one of the most important things to get right in your body because if they are not balanced, you could end up with massive symptoms of hives, skin itchiness, asthma, allergies, whether it be seasonal or year on, fatigue, brain fog, joint pain, and even bloating and digestive-based issues. So yes, it sounds like, wow, those are responsible then for a lot of the issues that people are suffering from. The answer is yes. If it is histamine related, all of those, or at least a couple of them may show up. So what I want to share with you here today is key nutrients involved in actually degrading those histamines. But first, let's go over why you might have them in the first place. So yes, I do want to say some people are genetically predisposed to them. I am genetically predisposed to mast cell activation syndrome called MCAS, right? I'm also more prone to not producing as much diamine oxidase, DAO. So yes, I have that in my genetics, but here's the thing. As a kid, I had massive histamines. Nobody had any idea about those things growing up in the 80s. Literally, no doctor was talking about histamines. You'd go to your allergist. Sure, they didn't talk about histamines. They certainly knew about histamines, but they gave you allergy injections. So I did that all through my young childhood and then, you know, maybe into some of my teenage years, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not the answer, right? Like that is not the answer. The answer is to say, wow, why is my rain barrel overflowing with a massive, massive amount of mast cells, which degranulate and create a lot of these histamines right? And cytokines. And so we could discover why, right? So, okay, some of it's genetically predisposed. So I had massive histamines all the way in my teenage years and through my twenties, they led to some of my OCD type issues. They led to certainly some of my like perfectionist and type A and my gut based issues and my hives and my brain fog and lightheadedness. It leads to all of those things. There's no doubt about it, but here's the thing. I don't have any histamine issues anymore. They're in my genetics, no doubt about it. And if I were to eat like a, you know, aged steak plus an aged cheese plus maybe red wine, I'd start to feel a little bit of those histamines, like almost anybody, right? But certainly I'm more genetically predisposed, but I don't deal with any allergies anymore. I don't deal with any hives, any skin itchiness, any skin itchiness between my fingers, like all sorts of different things. None of it, it's all gone. So how was I able to do that? Well, we have to look at why are genetic susceptibilities being set up in the first place. So again, genetics are amazing. All of that's great to look at, but it almost tells you nothing except what you're susceptible to. Nothing. Like I don't need to o overdo all these natural, I don't use pharmaceutical but natural histamine based products I can use a low level. But you know, if you look at just my genetics, you're like, oh, well, you need everything. Sure. I mean, but you don't need to go overboard once the body's balanced. And I'm a big, big believer in that. So a couple things that we want to set the stage for. Yes, you might be pretty predisposed to not producing as much diamine oxidase inside of the gut. But that could also be because, like me, I had candida overgrowth. I had SIBO, bacterial overgrowth, and dysbiosis in the gut. And I had H. pylori. You might also have parasites. I also had leaky gut, creating massive amounts of inflammation and a lot of mast cell activation syndrome as well. So you need to fix that, right? So running the uh, candida metabolic and vitamins test is a great first step to doing that. And, and again, anything that I talk about in terms of labs or the CBO protocol to help heal the gut, all of that's at stephencabral.com slash shop. That just takes you over to Equal Life, which is our integrative health practice that we work with people in 27 countries around the world. So you choose to do what works best for you, but that's where you can get all of the information. That's for sure. Another issue is that people are not producing as much of an enzyme called histamine and methyl transferase or H. NMT for short. And a like a lot like DAO, which gets a lot more of the credit, um, we also need that to begin to break down histamine because we all produce histamine. That's the truth. So if we all produce histamine, why do some people have higher levels than others? Well, some people produce more mast cells because of all the gut-based issues or heavy metals or mold or lime or other things. But also, some people don't produce as much of these enzymes to degrade the histamines that they naturally produce, right? So some people produce a normal amount, but don't degrade as much. Some people produce a massive amount, and those people also probably don't degrade the histamines as well. All right, so that's what we want, better degradation of them. In order to do that, we must get rid of the heavy metals. We must fix the gut. 
If not, you're always pouring more into an already full rain barrel. And if you have no idea what the rain barrel effect is, um, you can read about it in the book called The Rain Barrel Effect that I wrote. All right, so we already went over a lot of those specific symptoms, but now let's talk about how we can go about fixing this process. All right, so step one, we know we need to find out if there's a gut-based issue. So you can run three different labs called the Bacteria and Parasite Stool Test, the Candida Metabolic and Vitamins Test, and the food sensitivity test. I can link these up at stephencabal.com slash 3490. That'll make all those links much easier. If you don't want to run any at-home lab testing, you could also complete the seven-day functional medicine detox, then the parasupport protocol for parasites, and then the CBO protocol for gut and yeast. If you don't know if there's anything, you could kind of just work the protocols. And then you complete the CBO finisher with heals and seals, which heals and seals the gut. That's a six-month, just straightforward process and you're, then you're pretty much good to go. And like, so you can just follow the protocols, that works as well, uh, but you can decide to test if you choose to, to see if there's any of those things. And those labs will obviously show you that. Okay, so now that we've worked on the gut at the same time, we're gonna be replacing the nutrient deficiencies that cannot allow for more of the enzymes like DAO and HNMT to be produced. The first one, which most people don't talk about is copper. Believe it or not, copper has a huge role in DAO and histamine metabolism. Now, the way that you find out if you're low on copper is by running the minerals and metals test. Do it right at home, couple snips of hair. It literally tells you your zinc to copper ratio. If your ratio is low, meaning you have lower copper, then to balance out your zinc, you wanna take in more copper. Copper should pretty much always be taken with zinc, but it's at about a 15 to one ratio. A product called Balanced Zinc will give you that exact ratio. All right, vitamin B6 is the next one. The unsung hero of B vitamins. I've been trying to give it its praise since 2016 when this podcast started, but it helps in the conversion of histamines to less reactive forms. Also helps to calm that central nervous system. You don't need a lot. 50 milligrams or so a day should do it for most people. You can get that in your daily nutritional support plus one capsule of the activated B complex. B12 also helps support histamine detoxification. Again, I don't believe that people should be individually supplementing certain B vitamins. They work better when taken as a family. The activated B complex gives the whole family plus methyl donors, but you can also get them if you just need one serving in the daily nutritional support or the daily activated multi. The next one is iron. Iron is extremely important for the body. It's necessary for enzyme function, breaking down those histamines. However, most men and postmenopausal women do not need to take in more iron in terms of a supplement because there's naturally occurring iron in our food. There's naturally occurring iron in a product like Daily Nutritional Support because it contains cacao, chocolate, right? So it has a little bit of iron in there. That's all normal. I don't think most people though need to supplement with the 30 to 50 milligrams a day of additional iron. Menstruating women probably do, but you can test your ferritin levels to see if you need more usable iron. Vitamin C, a great one that's looked at on that candida metabolic and vitamins test. Vitamin C helps stabilize mast cells, helps prevent excessive histamine-based release. Besides something like stinging nettles, it is in quercetin. It is in the top, it's in the top three. Stinging nettles, quercetin, and vitamin C are the absolute best to use to reduce histamines, without a doubt, naturally. Uh, we use a product called Hist Pro. I use that every single day myself. Just to, it's because it's a great anti-aging. Uh, it does so many things for the immune system, but it has all of those nutrients and much more. It even has perilla extract in there. It's an amazing product. And when your histamines are bad, you can take two to three capsules three times a day. For daily use, one to three capsules, you're going to be doing great. I take about two to three each day. Okay, I talked about vitamin C, which is in the Hispro, but you can take additional vitamin C as well. Two to three grams a day for most people is a great amount total. And then obviously great, good quality omega-3s and good nutrition in your diet. We take, we use daily omega-3 support, two grams per day. If you eat wild caught fish four to five times a week, you should be all set as well. All right. So let's go over just a couple more things that I want to share with you. Regular detoxification. That can be daily intermittent fasting for 12 to 16 hours. You want to make sure that you're improving that. And the reason being that you need to make sure that instead of more always coming in, 
you give your body a time, at least equal time, to remove a lot of the waste-based product. Easiest way that we do in our practice is stop eating dinner by six, start eating food again by eight. That works for most people, eight in the morning. It's 14 hours. It's what I do. It's the best compromise we, we found for, more pe for most people. If you want to stop earlier in the day, great. Start a little earlier the next day. Or if you want a full 16 hours, six at night to 10 in the morning, breakfast at 10, lunch around 1, 1.30, dinner around 5.30. It, it works for most people. It's a, it's a great thing to do. And then quarterly functional medicine detoxes for seven days. I can't recommend it enough. If you've never heard about a detox, a functional medicine detox, not a cleanse, not a juice fast, not anything wrong with those, I would just look at the free course. I created a free course. It's at stephencabal.com slash courses. I highly recommend checking that out because it is going to give you the knowledge as to why this might be more important than ever in the toxic world that we live in. So, I mean, again, I could go on and on with all these details, but I want to make it short. I want to make it actionable. And what I would love for you to do is start to look at, okay, what's my gut function look like? What are my high histamine foods? I'm going to link up at steamcabal.com slash 3490. I'll link up those labs. I can't link up any nutritional supplements, but those are all at steamcabal.com slash shop. I can link up previous shows, though, on a low histamine diet as well, which will be important for you to follow while you're trying to empty that rain barrel, heal the gut, and get those nutrients into your body. Hopefully, this was helpful, everybody. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And of course, do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it can serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.